Hey, yeah, go ahead. Hello, can I talk? Yeah, what's up? Uh, hey, so are you familiar with Chris Langan? Who? Uh, Christopher Langan. Yes. Uh, yeah, so I was wondering with uh, reference to um, your argument is about uh, pre presuppositionalism and whatnot, why would I not be able to make, uh, why would I not be able to use the CTMU or the principles contained within as a foundation for the metaphysical worldview? Uh, because I think it wouldn't necessarily lead to a personal God and it would seem to fall into the trap of Platonism. Why would it, it not necessitate a personal God just because it doesn't refer to Christianity? Because, Pla because Platonism doesn't require a personal God. There is no yeah, but, personal see, God. Yeah, is not platonic. Well, I'm saying it could lead to that type of a, of a mindset about, you know, fundamental. Yeah, I'm saying it's not. It doesn't. Well, it's not going to give us the Christian metaphysic, right? Yeah, but why is that necessary in order for an account of a, let's say, an epistemological foundation when there is a possibility of another epistemological foundation such as the CTMU? Okay, well, is it a personal God? Um, yeah. Okay, is he uh, a all-knowing, all-powerful, yes. eternal yeah. God? Okay, is he Unitarian? Yeah. Uh, what do you mean by that? You would have to clarify so that's it's just that deity, right? Yeah. Okay. From all eternity. Yeah. Okay. So, how does the created order come to be? Is it an emanation or a creation? Uh, so, the CTMU metaphysical view of God is basically the definition of God as that of ultimate reality. So, this is something. Okay, but that's not CTMU. telling. That's not telling me anything, though. Yeah, yeah. I was about to. I'm going to connect it to that. So the, the CTMU has a principle called the reality principle, which basically means that there can exist nothing external to reality. So we're saying that the identification of reality or the division of the limitation of reality we see as of now as physical objects is what, as, and whatnot is ultimately sourced back to a fundamental um, source of God, unbound telesis, which is unbound potential. And that's what God is. Well, how do you know that's what God is? He, God cannot be anything else. Well, how do you know that? Uh, how, because of the poss impossibility of the counter. Uh, well, that actually doesn't justify that God is that just because you can't conceive of it as of another way. That's a fallacy. Could it be another way? What other possibility? It, could it doesn't be? matter because it's a fallacy to say that it's true because I can't conceive of it uh, to be another no, no, way. No, no, no. I'm not saying it's true because I can't conceive. I'm saying it's true because there is no other contrary. There's a well, how, but the, and I asked you how you knew that, and you said that I can't. That there's no other way. Uh, how, how, wait, are you asking me how, how do you I can know that? that how God do you, is the I'm asking, source of reality? how do you know in terms of epistemology that this principle that you're starting with is the case? Uh, the reality principle? E any of the propositions that you just listed. Which was the reality principle? I'm that one or the attending propositions that went along with it. How do you know your first principle is the case? Are you there? Hello? So not only would there be the problem with the question of justification, there would also be the problem that we run into with the denial of the essence energy distinction and the eternal Unitarian emanation type of position. So I was specifically asking you an epistemological challenge and a metaphysical challenge. Are you there? We can't hear you if you're there. I mean, you're still on the screen as there, but there's no sound. If you want to... Hello? Uh, and no, he's not muted. I didn't mute him. As you can see, he's not muted. Omni, are you there? Uh, hello? Am I brought back in? Yeah, you're back. Uh, yeah, so where were we? Sorry. Right, so I had a first an uh, epistemic critique of how you would know that that is the case. And then also, secondly, um, God as pure actuality uh, would lead to all kinds of metaphysical problems, typically the ones that we have uh, where we critique the Roman Catholic position of absolute divine simplicity. And those would be defeaters for knowledge. And wait, so well, would you specify that? So the first one was the epistemic critique where you said that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the that, second point that you brought up. That if God is uh, pure actuality, 
then it would be subject to the critiques that we make of the Roman Catholic position of absolute divine simplicity. Well, all right. I don't see how that's relevant to my position, though. <laughs> well, that's the position that you just said. What do you mean? No, no, no. That's not the position that I said. You I said God said is the just, ultimate no, no, reality. No, 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 I never said that God is mere actuality. There's a distinction between I didn't that say and ultimate near. reality. I said ult you said pure actuality. No, no, pure. I never said pure actuality. I said ultimate reality. There's a distinction between pure actuality and ultimate reality. It could totally be the case that God is ultimate reality. Okay, how do you know that? So you keep, you keep asserting all this stuff. How it, so God is unactualized? Because, wait, what? God is unactualized? Uh, no, no, no. God can be actualized and unactualized. Potential. Yeah. Okay, how do you know this, though? Um, be, well, I have it as a foundational presupposition. And, it is, it is okay, and, and how do you know that that's... The, for any, how do you know that that's the correct foundational presupposition? Because it makes uh, for uh, every axiomatic um, epistemological principle possible. It could not be the uh, any nobody. So could we already hold addressed any, this. Epi, wait, wait, wait! Nobody could hold any epistemological foundations if it were not for uh, the necessary. If these truths were not okay. necessarily the case. Okay. How do you know that? Because there is no possibility of reality. Outside but how of do that. you know that? Are you in, or do you have omniscience? Well, well, well it's based on the definitions, right? I mean, how? Yeah, it's based on. How the do you know that you've I mean, chosen the right self-evident principles? Based on the definitions that we have in common. Okay, so uh, so definitions make it self-evident. Well, yeah, that's how we use language. Okay, no, that's not how, how epistemology works. Theories. No, that's not how epist that doesn't make well, no, it no, justified. We have, to, we have to agree on certain. We have to agree on the why, the how, why does that make why does that to, do you know what it means to, to, to be able to do you know what justification means theories. you're just stating your, your position do you know what justification yeah, yeah, given means? reason behind why something is yeah that's well it's more it's not just that it's more than that that's one element of justification but how do you know that you've so, chosen the right ones because yeah, you I, have I a form of you have a form of foundationalism right yeah how do you know those are the right self-evident maxims well, because if they were not the case, it would impo it'd be impossible for me to communicate. It would well, be impossible okay. for me to. But for, but it, that it would that be all that for tells me to be situated within reality just as much as you would be. All that tells no, you don't understand. Reality. That's why it still doesn't get your justification because all that's saying is that it appears that it has yeah, to be I, that like, way. The, anybody could make this. Um, anybody could. You're not even listening. You, we got. We have. <laughs> No, they can't because you're missing the why? point. This is this is illustrates why foundationalism is not okay, true. I just Stop interrupting me because this the point is that it illustrates why foundationalism is not true. So I'm getting at something more fundamental than all your metaphysical assertions, which is that foundationalism is isn't the case. Because yeah, you have you have axioms okay. and are you familiar with Chisholm's problem? With what problem? Chisholm's Sorry. problem of criterion. No. Okay, so you have axioms that are self-evident, and then you have other things that are yeah. not, right? Sure. Okay. So how do you know you have the right criteria, which is prior to the sussing out of these two categories? Sorry, can you repeat that again? How do you know you have the right criteria to suss out these two categories? And if you have that, which you just admitted that you do, then you have something that's more fundamental than the self-evident axioms, and therefore they're no well, longer self-evident. Self self-referential is necessarily self-referential. That's, that's not answering Chisholm's uh, criteria problem. Well, how not? You're just telling me the position again. How do you know that you have the right criteria well, to yeah, suss I, out? Ultimately, at, at a certain point, yeah, well, that that is we, what we have to do. It's just that we have to in, infer. From that's that called being arbitrary. That, so you're just asserting. You're uh, just being arbitrary. That's called being arbitrary. Wait, wait, wait. I, I don't understand. How is I'm this sorry. It's not my fault. Anything that you hold. Again, you admitted that there's two categories. There's self-evident and non-self-evident. This sure, is, I just this, understand how this is so, any different from... So there's a prior criteria. It doesn't matter. That's a two quote way. We're talking about your position. You want to defend CTMU. You didn't come here to critique TAG. You came to defend CTMU. So I want to know how it solves... Yeah, I'm asking how the I don't care what you're asking you. You're not You're not going to answer wait, wait, this question. Wait, wait. No, no, no. I asked you about the CTMU actually in the beginning. I, I asked you... Yeah, so you're here to defend that. Stop part. deflecting. You're deflecting. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no you're no, no, deflecting. No. At the beginning of answer the... All right, you're either... You're deflecting for my question. All right, you're going. You're deflecting for my question in real time. You can't answer the Chisholm criterion problem, so you're deflecting. I asked you in the beginning. Did of the you not? So I don't care. Did you not wait, say? Wait, 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 wait. wait. I no, asked you, you're I, you're done. I, Goodbye. I, Jack, what's up? 
don't don't cha don't challenge me on my self-evident principles. Let's go back to the very first, first question I asked you. Why would we go back to the first question when the first question led to this point? <laughs>